One of the things that I do is a service to the libertarian movement. You know, I'm always servicing the libertarian movement. Mm -hmm. uh, I give and I give and I give. Oh, of course, naturally. Yes, and uh, very generous. And and in my thoroughness, on Sunday, I was updating we are liber uh, libertarianpodcast.com. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know, we run a site called libertarianpodcast.com. And basically, I've got a... I've got pretty much every libertarian podcast that I have been able to find. Some that aren't even on the iTunes directory that as, as, we, as we have had people share it, as we have shared it, we've found other shows. There's a comprehensive list at the bottom. Up at the top, I've got a whole bunch of the best shows that the reason those guys are up there, they're like us. They're hardworking. They put a lot of effort into their show. They, uh, excuse me, they're professional. <laughs> like so they adjust their mic right as they're doing their introduction uh they they're long lasting a lot of good uh podcast in that upper portion and uh as i was uh one of the things that i added to the site was an opml which you can download import to your podcatcher import to your itunes or whatever and so i was adding a bunch of feeds i mm -hmm. did the libertarian one there's 121 podcasts on that and i was doing a mega feed of like 150 pod like political podcasts mm -hmm. and so i was going through the itunes directory on sunday and i couldn't find any of the alex jones shows i thought this is really weird so i just tweeted out you know hey alex jones isn't in the itunes directory mm -hmm. little did i know i was breaking news <laughs> 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 because like Nobody was reporting yet that Alex Jones, that I had searched for it a couple hours probably after they had pulled him from the iTunes directory. And so I I initially and still meet this news with horror. Mm -hmm. Okay, So we are now looking at 15 companies have uh, pulled Alex Jones off of their platforms. Uh, you know, let me just say this outright out front. So you know exactly where I stand on two issues, because the screeching that has taken place on our on our Facebook feed ha has been unreal. Uh, it has been unbelievable. Uh, if it's like if you complain about something that a a private company does, there's a group of libertarians who just assume that you are against property rights, which is really weird. Like if I walked out of Applebee's and said Applebee's sucked, mm -hmm. a guy would be standing there going. Don't you even believe in property rights? But how dare you? <laughs> right. I think Applebee should bring back the blondie. You can't tell them what to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're a private company. You can't them. <sighs> yeah. Yes, they are. And I can complain and say why I hate that. Exactly right. So, yes, I firmly believe in property rights. I firmly believe that Alex Jones, if Apple or one of these 15 companies does not want Alex Jones on their platform. They have every right not to have him on their platform. Mm -hmm. I would not personally host Alex Jones on the We Are Libertarians network. I think that Alex Jones says a lot of things that are... Like, if you listen to Alex Jones, he says an inaccurate thing literally every two minutes. Like, I've, I've, I've been a somewhat consistent listener of his over the last couple of years since Trump won because I want to understand, like, what he's about... And I think he's hilarious. I think he is a, a, a hilarious comedian. It, do I think he is an accurate source of information? No, I do not. I think 50% of it is just bluster and selling vitamins and self-promotion. 25% is just absolutely insane. And 25% is, that's an interesting fact. Let me go look that up. And what you find is when you look it up, he's usually right, but he's got some uh, some basic thing wrong. Yeah, so, a jump to conclusion, wheelertarians.com, and that you get there <laughs> when you watch, you know, when you watch it, Alex Jones, you know, especially when you listen to our content, wheelertarians.com and um, Twitch, wheelertarians. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the, the, all that self promotion stuff, but yeah, the the show, the showmanship of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I I firmly believe that any company has the right. Now, here's the thing: if you go into a restaurant. And you are you are walking into a business. There's something called an implied contract. They it's something under common law, where if you walk in, they they are if you hang out an open for business shingle, you reserve the right to, uh, you serve everybody that comes in your doors. But you can change that implied contract at any time. With social media companies, we don't have an implied contract. We have an explicit contract. We have a, ter a terms of service that we signed, and. So we we are operating under this agreement as users and as a platform. 
And one problem that I have with what has happened to Alex Jones is that on within the span of about 12 hours, when Apple moved on him, he was pulled off of Apple, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, LinkedIn, Pinterest, MailChimp, uh, Disc Discuss, mm -hmm. it looks like Disc Discuous, yeah. a couple days later, Audio Boom, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Sprout Social, and YouPorn, according to InfoWars. <laughs> okay, and when Pinterest, uh, about 24 hours later, pulled him off, I realized, okay, this is a PR stunt. These people are, mm -hmm. these people are trying to get into the press release of companies that did good. Uh, and so what I really want to know, and I have had a conversation with Spreaker because we are on Spreaker, Spotify, um, we are on MailChimp, we are on Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, obviously, YouTube, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on Stitcher, uh, we're on YouPorn, actually. I did reserve a channel uh, just for fun. Uh, so if people looked for us there, we did have a channel, but I don't use it. Um <laughs> But I was actually at Podcast Movement. I met some people from Spreaker, and uh, I was really impressed with their product. And so I was going to go from spending $5 a month with them to around $125 a month for their software and then leave a couple services and consolidate into this really nice software that would have allowed more conversation between you and us during the show and I just sent back a note, and I said to these guys, I mean, I can actually read to you um, what I wrote. Um, uh, I regret to inform you that I will not be switching services to Spreaker after your decision to remove Alex Jones from your platform. I'm not an Alex Jones fan, but I'm not comfortable doing business with a company that decides what political speech should be heard by an audience. I plan to spend $120 a month with you for a long term, because I like your product, but I don't want to suffer the same fate. Please pass this on to management. Uh, now, if I can pull this up really quick, I will read what they wrote, and then I'll read my response. Um, sorry, guys. Hey, how was your week? <laughs> it's going great. You know, another company came in. But one to the point, the prohibition thing. Mm -hmm. With the computers that we did the install, a lot of someone questioned and asked, why did I leave the game? Why did I add games to the the Windows 10 image on the, you know, the company's computers. And I go, well, because if I don't give them games, they will try to get past everything I put in there to have games. These games are downloaded on the SSD. Right. And I know they're safe. Right. Play these games. Yeah. You're going to play games. I know you're going to. All right. So they wrote back, guy that I talked to at Podcast Movement, perfectly lovely gentleman. Um, you know, I really have nothing bad to say about Spreaker. They've been very polite to me. They've, mm -hmm. they've got a good product, but... Um, you know, he wrote back to say, I'm sorry to hear this. Our community rules are pr pretty clear in this regard. We verified that the content was clearly spreading hate speech. We rarely remove content from our platform since we really care about freedom of speech. But in this case, the infringement was pretty clear. Best. Um, I certainly understand. I write back. And Alex Jones says indefensible things. I personally would not want to host what he says. And I don't blame you. The problem is that the definition of hate speech is a pretty broad and ill-defined ill term. Did Spreaker identify the exact content that caused them to pull him? What are the rules? When you discuss politics, religion, or current events, you sometimes have to ask unpopular questions. What are the specific rules? As an industry professional that helps set up a lot of podcasts, I have a difficult time recommending your service until this is clearly articulated. When you pull them at the same time as several other companies at the same time, it looks like a PR ploy as opposed to a principled stand. I don't see the point in partnering with a company that has arbitrary standards and will go along with the crowd. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from them on that. I'd love mm. them to have a good answer to that because I'd love to use their service. Right. But when you have 15 people, 15 companies mm -hmm. that pull Alex Jones content off of their platform mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, uh, right. Un, and it wasn't based on content, as far as I can tell, but, but nobody's released what the specific content was, which makes this even murkier. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to go, okay, are you abiding by the rules that you set out in the agreement that I signed? So when I am partnering with you and I am paying you money if you're Spreaker or using your platform for free like Facebook mm -hmm. or Apple Podcasts, w what are the rules? 
Right. I need to know the rules. So as a libertarian podcaster, I don't make the same mistake. Because mm-hmm. as Ben Shapiro said, Ben Shapiro doesn't believe in using the the pronouns, uh, a person's chosen pronouns. Well, that could be considered hate speech to a lot of people in Silicon Valley. And Canada. And Canada. Does Ben Shapiro, uh, is Ben Shapiro spreading hate speech? Could he be deplatformed from all of these companies? Um, so, you know, when Alex Jones is deplatformed from t- from 15 companies in 24 hours for something that he didn't say last week, that he probably, that it was probably because of things he said three, four, five years ago. Well, I say a lot of things in this podcast I don't believe, I didn't believe five years ago. Mm-hmm. This show has been around six years. There's stuff when I listen back to the episodes 20s, 30s, 40s, I go, I don't believe that anymore. And then there were periods of the show where we were trying to find our voice and figure some things out, and we were a little more offensive than we are now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, could we be deplatformed for things that we said that we've done a mea culpa for? So what are the rules? And so if you're going to deplatform people, yes, you have a right to do that, but you also have to honor the contract that we have agreed to, and you have to be very clear and transparent, especially when you're these 15 companies, uh, 15 including Instagram, mm-hmm. because people noticed Alex Jones was on Instagram, so then the blue checkmark mob turned on Instagram and Facebook, and he got pulled from that. Right, uh, and they're after uh, you know. So m- my big problem with this is yes, the companies have every right to do that. Alex Jones says reprehensible things that cannot be defended. Um, but why did you pull him? How did you pull him? Give us specific examples, so I don't make the same mistake. So I don't suffer the same fate because mm-hmm. it's a very real concern as somebody who does a talk show around current events. Correct. They won't. It is these companies when they do ban people, stuff like that, they never point like, well, it's this tweet, it's this line that they said. One, they like to do it because they like to to live behind their vague terms of service, their rules of a guidance. To, so when they do go in to ban people, they you know they can hide, but like, well, this one, this murky like that. And why? The other reason why is like it's also to, you know, like it's also scary from this effect because. People get hit for different things, but other things get passed, put by. You can watch um, a dead body get hit trending on YouTube. Um, you can watch... Um, Louis Farrakhan is a perfect example of somebody who is an anti-Semite, yeah. who says reprehensible things about a lot of races, mm-hmm. especially Jews, and is blue checkmark verified on Twitter still, still has his Facebook pages, still has an app. Yeah. You know, he doesn't get the same level of hate. There's a lot of Antifa Twitter pages still. Um, there's all kinds of different. Um, uh, let's see, let's see what listen what that Candace Owens stunt that she did a couple. Um, well, yeah, it was like last week. Um, but they go after anyone who does talk political events, um, the frequent event, and talk about hate speech, and they will never really clearly define that. Not even on campuses or even laws. So that's why you get a lot of pushback when anyone tries to do anything because it's like, all right, I understand the hateful language you want to talk about, but I just want to know what it is. Yeah, nobody in their right mind, and this is why I don't believe, somebody asked me today, well, what would you have done? And I said, nothing. Because Alex Jones, if you think the Republic is so fragile that a vitamin salesman that yells crazy things is a danger to the Republic of the United States, maybe... 50,000 to 150,000 people actually believe what this guy says in a country of 330 million. You know, he has a lot of listeners, but I think he inflates numbers Mm -hmm. and he's also entertainment for a lot of us. (laughs) The reality is, this is my complaint with, this is my beef with the left, is they're creating these panic scenarios. All right. Yeah. So I wrote this out, and, and this is a perfect formula for exactly what is happening now. Um, you grow up, you, you start a We Are Libertarians platform, all right? So Harry and I start We Are Libertarians in 2012. You know, back, well, I, he didn't start it. It was me, Galt, and, and Creighton. Uh, Galt will be with us tomorrow night. Uh, and it was a fun thing to do with our friends. And over mm-hmm. the last six years, it's turned into a small business for me. And... We're, we're growing in popularity. We've grown by 5,000 downloads an episode, you know, so we've grown by like, what is that, f- nearly four or five times bigger. Uh, mm-hmm. 
what happens when we grow to the point where we're really having an impact that's politically influential? We get up to the Alex Jones, Ben Shapiro, you know, pod save the world type guys. Mm-hmm. And I, being me, get on the wrong side of a leftist BuzzFeed writer someday on Twitter, and he has an axe to grind, basically because I don't believe what this BuzzFeed writer believes. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we have experienced what happens on these click melt sites. So our biggest downloaded episode was an interview with Ron Paul in 2013. It got 114,000 downloads, and it's because he said something about Rand Paul, who was thinking about running for president at that time, that was politically relevant. And I, I uploaded it and tweeted it at a couple of uh, writers. One of them is Oliver Darcy, who... Uh, remind me about Oliver, <laughs> who, who at the time was working for Blaze. Mm-hmm. And he posted on the Blaze. Then it went to the Daily Caller. Then the Huffington Post picked it up. And then it, then it spread to a ton of other little sites that crashed our website. And so what you have at these clickbait mills in New York, Washington, D.C., and L.A., are a very powerful network of people. And if you get on the wrong side or the right side of one of these blue check marks on Twitter that write for Bustle or the Huffington Post or Refinery29, mm-hmm. you you can you can have a pretty big impact. And if you're like the guy who worked for um what was Nick's Denton site that got closed down, Gawker. Gawker is the one that made Janine Sacco famous, the woman who flew to Africa, made the the racist, the unfortunate racist remark Mm -hmm. that was a joke, landed, and her life was over, and it has never been the same since. And that's the kind of power that these that these click mill sites have. And all of the people who work at the at the uh, New York Times or the Washington Post or the Wall Street Journal, all of these media outlets, people who are producers at CNN. They all work in New York. They're all friends with the same journalistic crowd. They may have worked at Refinery29 or BuzzFeed at one point. You know, the K-Files, for instance, he went from BuzzFeed to CNN. And so they're friends with each other on Twitter. They network. You can watch them all day long on Twitter, network with each other. Mm -hmm. And so what they do for their clickbait articles is they find somebody like Alex Jones, who is incredibly outrageous, and they find really funny out-of-context clips and there's a lot of stuff, now let me say this, there's a lot of stuff that Alex Jones says that is in context, that is, is inappropriate. But I think that there, um, that he has kind of become the gun control of modern media. People who don't listen or interact with anything Alex Jones does have an opinion on Alex Jones, and it's informed by mainstream media, and they consider him to be extremely dangerous. But if they listen to Alex Jones, they notice what a joke he is. Yeah. And so people have, inf- have, and I've seen libertarians do this too, they spread facts about Alex Jones or general impressions of him that are not completely accurate. There are pieces of him that are absolutely true in these mainstream media reports or these clickbait sites. But if you listen to a show, if you listen to three hours a week of Alex Jones, you don't get the kind of mean character or you you know like he's just not as dangerous as everybody thinks he is um but nonetheless they take the more outrageous parts and they amplify it through this network of blue check marks Mm -hmm. on the coasts and they label it hate speech they label it whatever they want but usually it's racist here's the top 10 most racist alex jones moments he's a white you know all the all the way to the point that alex jones howard dean is now tweeting that alex jones is a nazi He's not a Nazi, okay? And we do no... Like, those of us who are not... Here's here's why they start with an Alex Jones or they start with a Stormfront. Mm -hmm. It's because you don't want to go... Those of us who support Alex Jones, Mm -hmm. because I don't support Alex Jones, so we'll go, oh, listen, he's a horrible human being, which is not the right thing to say because all you're doing is just buying into the narrative that isn't even... You're saying something that's untrue. Yeah. The guy's not a horrible human being. He says stuff out loud that he is uh, that aren't great. So I'm not an Alex Jones supporter, but I'm, I, I have to say that a lot of the stuff that is said about Alex Jones, you just don't see if you watch his show, if you actually engage in the content. And so... So what happens is it gets labeled hate speech, and eventually this blue checkmark mob 
they one up each other to the point that he's a Nazi when he's mm-hmm. not a Nazi. He's not a white supremacist. He's just a guy that believes, you know, crazy things like nine eleven truth and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so they take this out of out of you know, hate speech becomes the pretense for destroying a business because being a racist, a sexist, or a homophobe strips the victim of the rights in the mind of the accusers. So if you're a racist, then you can do whatever you want. If you, if you that if Harry thinks I'm a racist. <laughs> And he's a liberal writer for the mm-hmm. Washington Post. He doesn't care about me or my rights or what happens to me. I'm an evil person because I'm a racist. Right. And so no one actually fact checks the context, but they run with the story to further the political agenda. Uh, so in this case, the Russian bots, the Russians, the Russians. Donald Trump is president. Everyone's dying. It's the worst thing of, of all time. How did he get elected? Russians and fake news. Well, who's the biggest fake news? Alex Jones. Get him. And so they don't fact check it because they're setting a pretense to get rid of the thing that they don't like, which is fake news, which is bullshit, which is what we've said from the very beginning. It's all a pretense because they're pissed that Donald Trump won. They Mm -hmm. can't believe that Hillary Clinton lost. And it couldn't have been that Hillary Clinton was bad. What's the reason? So it must be Russians and fake news. Correct. Hillary Clinton spent $2 billion in Facebook ads or some crazy amount of money and she lost the election, but $100,000 in Russian advertising is somehow the reason that Donald Trump and, and Twitter bots. Have you ever done anything because someone tweeted something? Right. Has zero influence on you whatsoever, but according to these people, it's how Donald Trump got elected. Um, so then it just becomes consistent harassment. Media, it, it sets a narrative. It sets a, a, a tone that mainstream media then picks up and they run those news stories, they take the clips out of context, and eventually the lie becomes the truth. Mm-hmm. And that is, that's the dangerous point. That's the tipping point. Once you get to the mainstream media saying things that are fundamentally untrue, then it's game over. And then people take CNN articles as gospel. They don't actually go and watch Alex Jones. They just believe that the guy hates Nazis. The guy has never, to my knowledge, if I'm wrong, please send it to me, um, at editor at wearelibertarians.com, personally harassed victims of Sandy Hook. Now, he has said unkind things about them because they are now suing him. Mm-hmm. So in recent in the recent months, he's said some things, I think, about that, that, that are not kind, but he's certainly not outside stalking them. Uh, and when you take the, when you are a, when you enter the public sphere, mm-hmm. and this is the crazy thing about it, the idea that like Alex Jones gets banned from Facebook for quote unquote bullying Robert Mueller is the craziest, most fucked up thing I've ever heard in my life. Correct. You Once you start introducing defamation lawsuits into public conversations and you're suing media, and, and listen, Trump's the worst about this. You start to erode free speech or the concept of free speech in a society. And so it's a very dangerous precedent to set that you somehow can't say negative things about a government public official when that's the exact point of it, (laughs) you know? And so you end up with a platform where only people say nice things about government officials. Um Media outlets outlets run the news stories, taking the clips out of context. Interviewers start to ask CEOs to defend your out of context statements, and so the CEOs like Mark Zuckerberg are on, are on TV or in front of Congress, being defend this out of context quote, and they mm-hmm. can't, they don't want to, and so you get to platform because they don't want to upset their shareholders who are their real bosses. Mm-hmm. They don't want to threaten their government subsidies, of which Apple, Google, Facebook get billions of dollars of subsidies and tax breaks from the federal government. Uh, so they're going to do whatever they want. And the real goal of a Facebook, when you when you reach near monopolistic levels like Facebook, Google, Apple, YouTube, the the thing that ha- always happens in historically in these instances is that they, they drown out the ability for competition to take them on by helping write legislation. And mm-hmm. we're at that point with these companies where... They're willing to sit down with a Mark Warner of Virginia and write the regulations that will govern them, and they write it in their favor and drown out any kind of competition. Yep. And so they're favorable to government. They do things for their shareholders to please their government masters, and that's where we're at. So uh, the, the little guy, quote-unquote, like Alex Jones, We Are Libertarians, Glenn Beck, Ben Shapiro, you, you're just out of luck. You got nothing. You're 
you're hosed. Right. Yeah. So, go ahead. It's uh, basically what they've uh, done already in the EU, where they basically have competition to make sure there is not another Facebook because there's not another YouTube. Right from europe the the fact that you have to scan all uploaded content to your website for copyright material or offensive things well who's got the server you get the manpower the, the code to do that yeah youtube and we'll and we'll kind of jump into that in in the, alpha goog yeah in the next topic but so you end up getting deplatformed because they have to they mm -hmm. can't risk their bit their business because so it's easier to get rid of Alex Jones and to take whatever minimal heat you might get for getting rid of somebody like Alex Jones. Mm -hmm. um, allies stay silent to avoid being targeted. And Alex Jones made a great point. What happens if I go on Joe Rogan? Joe Rogan has invited me on his podcast. By my presence on his podcast, am I threatening his business? If I go on Alex, if I go on Joe Rogan, will they remove him? Mm -hmm. If I go on a podcast, will they be in danger of being removed too? The very association of Alex Jones with anyone at this point, who knows what the rules are? Because the rules are, if the blue checkmark mob comes for you on Twitter, you're getting removed. It doesn't even matter if you violated their terms of service or not. They don't care about their own rules. It's not applied equally. I wish Alex would do that. Just go around to every podcast he could get his hands on and just be on everyone. So, like... All of them update with an Alex Jones episode. He's crazy enough to probably get that across. I would 100% participate. You know, yeah. It's like, do Alex Jones. I would interview Alex Jones. Because you're right. You know, okay. You won't let me do my own show. Yeah, you're right. Can I interview him this way? Right. Now, he did break some of the rules on YouTube where he did get banned from live streaming. And then he created another account. Right. That's a big no-no to YouTube and Twitch and a lot of different companies. I understand that because, like, that's for their band rules, but their band stuff doesn't make any sense anyways from there. Right. But. <clears throat> so, then you get the useful idiots, i.e. our Facebook page. <laughs> when you look at our Facebook page, it is useful idiots. And those are the people who who are making arguments that may or may not be true. In, in this case, the people on our Facebook page well-meaning people who believe, you know, in, in, in for whatever reason, I'm not sure where this, this came from, but I think we're seeing with libertarians, and, and I don't mean this pejoratively, part autistic behavior, just absolute doggedness on a single fact without the ability to kind of separate themselves and think that two things can be true at once, which is, yes, it is their right to remove them, but B, it's also really not good that extremely powerful companies mm -hmm. like Silicon Valley companies have now decided for the first time in their business model that they are going to censor political speech. Correct. They have censored for hate, for, for just flat out like Nazi stuff, which even I don't agree with removing because I'm a free speech ab absolutist, mm -hmm. or pornography, or things that are just very clear. Alex Jones, to me, is not that clear. And I think that it is the first time that I... I think it is a very... It is very much a beta test. <laughs> they are beta testing to see how people react to removing Alex Jones from these platforms. And I gotta, I gotta say, if you are a free speech advocate, you failed the test. And libertarians, you are so hell-bent on making the property rights arguments to libertarians who agree with you that you have completely missed the fact that this doesn't end with Alex Jones. It won't. If you think it stops with Alex Jones, you're crazy. They've already started talking about banning climate denial from their platform. They're, they've already started talking about banning certain Fox shows like Tucker and Fox and Friends, and they being the blue checkmark mob. Mm -hmm. It worked. Nobody stood up for Alex Jones except for, like, I think uh, Drudge and Dana, uh, the mm -hmm. talk show host, what's her name? Dana Lash. Dana Lash. Like, nobody said anything to protect Alex Jones, which is allies stay silent because they don't want to be targeted next. Mm -hmm. And useful idiots just make the arguments of the other side. And I have to say, if, if you don't get what's going on here, or you refuse to see what's going on here... You're you're making a mistake and you're playing into the hands of progressives of any variety. Right. People who want to paternalistically decide what you can and can't read on the internet. Mm -hmm. And no, it's it is private companies. 
But what is happening is it's all a pretext for regulation. Mm-hmm. And if you lay down and let the cultural conversation just go because it's private companies, then you're letting you're you're, you're sending positive signals that uh, they're not going to fight back. Right. Okay. You're going to go back in the AOL wall garden of the '90s. That's right. And so I'm not advocating for the government regulation or forcing companies to do anything, but you do have a right to use your voice and the power of the free market, just as I did with Spreaker. And libertarians haven't even done that. <clears throat> now, the second Target says you can't open carry in Target, libertarians lose their fucking mind and start boycotting Target and Starbucks. Right. But they don't do that in this case. And I don't get the double standard there because it's more important to stand up to Silicon Valley and tell them that their platform should remain neutral and that they should remain fair and that they should abide by the agreements that they've set as opposed to setting a text case, a test case like this. Because what happens in five years is that We Are Libertarians isn't on any of your favorite platforms. Apple Podcasts makes up 75% of our listenership. Right. We're not, if you're a podcast, and that's everybody, that's like 60 to 70% for everybody who's on a podcast. Yeah. It's, it's iTunes. Right. And the podcast app on the phones. Yeah. And so if, if your favorite, like, there's nothing I could do to fight back. I get a blue check mark mob after me, I'm done. Like, I, I'll go bankrupt. And so when that happens, is it chills everybody else? People go, people over at Lions of Liberty and Jason Stapleton, and uh, they go, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to have to start to be more careful. And so people stop speaking up. Mm-hmm. And you've already had Twitter banned Scott Horton, the, right. the Ron Paul, the, the Daniel, Daniel McAdams, the Ron Paul Institute. Like, it, it, it's, it doesn't stop with Alex Jones whatsoever. No, no. It, uh, <clears throat> and, all right, so you're right. This is like a test, and they've been doing tests like this, like when Spotify removed R. Kelly things for the uh, some of the acts that he did, and no one said anything. Right. They're like, "Oh yeah, okay, that was a good test, right?" Right. Facebook does these tests to other people all the time. Yeah. They mess with your feed to you know to see if they can make you more depressed. They went out and tested people's um, apps, they said app update to make your app crash on you just to see what you would do. You know, so it's not unusual for Facebook and like a lot of these Silicon Valley companies to test and just mess with you to see what they can or cannot get away with. Right. But these walled gardens, like the AOL wall garden, it's coming. It's popping up. And it's scary that like a lot of these libertarians who like, you know, basically the 90s fought and tried to show people around that wall or putting or like congratulating and yelling and basically yelling at the bricks to be put up again. Yeah. And it's mystifying to me because I I thought we were for free speech and I I thought we were for like like the answer to Alex Jones is not to prohibit him from speaking like the the way that you learn Alex Jones is an idiot is by listening to Alex Jones. Correct. And so the solution to bad speech is not prohibition. The solution to speech is good speech is exposure and then refuting those ideas. This is a this is a um, a historical principle, a natural right, something that mankind has fought for from the beginning, and something that you should expect from the products that you use. That they support freedom of speech. That they are not the ones who tell you what is or is not appropriate political speech. Because if you want Silicon Valley determining what is political speech, you're going to have a real bad time, libertarian. It's just not going to go well for you. Yep. Well, Alex Jones has learned in the past that these companies have done that. So he made sure never took a site down. You know, he was on that other site, kept his other site, kept his home site, and always kept trying to, which like Wheeler Terrence is like, right. get on the email newsletter. Here's our site. This yeah. is how you can find us. Kicking people to like, no, 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 take this RSS feed. Yes, you can find us on these other apps feed, but take the hard line RSS feed. Right. Because if something happens, something breaks that, you know, you have your RSS feed. Yeah, if you if you subscribe an Apple Podcast, consider have, having a an app like Downcast or Beyond Pod on your phone that has your favorite podcast feeds. So I wouldn't have the Alex Jones uh, podcast feed if it, if I didn't have a backup podcast app. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, but what happens when they start going after Alex Jones' domain? 
Right. Because what happens when the fever gets so high mm-hmm. that Alex Jones loses his domain name? Right. <laughs> you know, and, and trust me, we're going to get there. He's still on Apple and Google on their apps. Mm-hmm. Uh, although he's not being listed in the charts, he still has the number one app on both Apple. Uh, he was fit number 55 on iTunes mm-hmm. uh, when I looked before the show. And CNN all day long was running stories. Why is Apple allowing him to have an app on their platform? So mm. that is old media threatened by new media. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you, working with a lot of old media people, not necessarily the people that I work with directly, but in the industry, especially in television, especially in news divisions, there is a tremendous amount of anger that the internet and all of the different platforms, uh, it's like this Oliver Darcy guy that I was talking about earlier. Here's a conservative-leaning journalist who has worked for The Blaze. Uh, I think, I don't remember who he works for now. I think it might be The Daily Wire or The Daily Caller. Um, And he was, you know, he tweets out a lot of Alex Jones stuff. He listens to Alex Jones regularly. And he was cheering him getting removed. And I'm just like, why would a journalist cheer someone's someone's ability to... CNN? CNN? Is he working for CNN now? Senior media reporter at CNN. Okay. Why is it that somebody who is a reporter who who is constantly huffing and puffing about how important free speech is in the Trump era excited about Alex Jones getting deplatformed? It's because they don't want the competition. Okay? We Are Libertarians is a new brand of opinion journalism. Opinion journalism used to exist on the editorial newspaper or in magazines beginning in the 50s. Hmm. But it was always the domain of newspapers. And mm-hmm. then opinion journalism creeped into CNN in the 90s. And you see in what... And, and there is an absolute crazy arrogance about journalists. Go watch the Fourth Estate on, on Showtime. It is in the embedded in the New York Times in the way that the circus was embedded in campaigns. And you just see the absolute arrogance and pretense of these journalists that they are saving democracy like Jim Acosta embodies the secret voice of every person who is employed at any level of journalism be it your local small town newspaper or like newspaper reporters are the worst yeah TV reporters are almost as bad but this not as guardian bad. we are the guardians of democracy and so <laughs> they are fucking Shield. pissed when We Are Libertarian shows up to a Trump rally and they have to stand in the press box next to me, okay? You would have... When Rob Kendall was uh-huh. sitting in the press box with his Trump hat on... Which is ridiculous, by the way. Which is, yeah, even... I mean, listen, I'm for pushing boundaries, but come on, dude. Um, you could have the daggers that were shot at him because we are impartial. Mm-hmm. We are special. And so they are so mad that... Opinion journalism, that activist journalism like uh, Project Veritas, uh, Mark, that, Mark Dice, that, not Mark Dice, um, uh, Paul Joseph Watson, Russell, yeah, uh, yeah that any of these platforms exist. I'm not mm-hmm. saying let's not equivocate ourselves with Paul Joseph Watson, but I'm saying like Luke Radowski, we are changed. The, a lot of the stuff he did is pretty good. The fact that advertising dollars are funneling to us, mm-hmm. the fact that uh, eyeballs and attention are funneling to um, small media outlets pisses them off to no end. The fact that they are losing um, revenue to Craigslist and to other me- and to Facebook, it makes them crazy that they have lost a key part of their business model to Facebook. Mm-hmm. And so that is why they are always so quick to go after Facebook and social media. Yep. It's because they stole our money. That was our money. And then when they look at Alex Jones or if they look at Ben Shapiro or if they look at We Are Libertarians or if they look at any any blog mm-hmm. site like um uh you know think i think progress think progress reallibertarians.com again daily call <laughs> daily caller they are so mad that these we are the new york times we are the ones who's and i agree i agree that you have better editorial yes. standards than we are libertarians.com yes i would trust your reporting over mine okay because yeah. you have a full time staff of thousands doing reporting and you have 500 years of editorial or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so these journalists are just pissed. And so when they can take new media out, they do it. 
They don't care about the consequences because at the end of the day, when Facebook finally throws up its hands and says, no more politics on, on social media, but we know our users want political content, so we'll feed you partnered content. So we're going to go with the New York Times, we're going to go with the Washington Post, and we're going to go with CNN. And maybe they'll throw Fox News in there and give conservatives a bone. Mm -hmm. And you'll get five partnered content feeds of politics. And they'll feed, feed, filter out keywords of everything. You post a, a We Are Libertarians thing on Facebook in five years, it won't show up. Bury it, bury it. Or bury. it'll be completely buried. Yeah. So they yeah. don't want... They don't want people like weird libertarians to exist. They have practiced this shadow banning technique, right, yep. on under, quote unquote undesirable, basically sex workers. You can go into the, uh, their Twitter and their Facebook pages, and they will talk about how they're being buried. They apply and go everything by every rules of the service, but they like they realize they find out that they're not getting the circulation they have because the algorithm is messing with them, and they're testing the algorithm on them to come after possibly us. Yeah. Because who's going to defend the right of sex workers to exist on social media? Well, libertarians will. Right, but that's a but a very small minority. Right, and it's why it's why mechanisms are built around the Klan. It's built around anti Semites. It's built around Alex Jones. It's mm -hmm. built around sex workers. That's built around the most egregious and most marginalized segments of our society. Mm -hmm. It's because that's where the mechanisms are built because no one objects. No one stands up and no one says this is wrong. Yeah. And that's what's happening here. And nobody wants to admit it, but this is a very dangerous precedent that is being set. Right. This is the culmination of the last year and a half on this program of talking about the dangers of the fakeness of the Russian investigation. Mm -hmm. The Russian investigation is the pretense that they're going to use to start Everything. enacting yeah. legislation. Chris, Senator Chris Murphy thinks tech giants banning Alex Jones Infowars is a good start for the survival of our democracy. He tweeted on August 6th, a, a United States senator tweeted, Infowars is the tip of a giant iceberg of hate and lies that uses sites like Facebook and YouTube to tear our nation apart. These companies must do more than take down one website. These companies must do more than take down one website. The survival of our democracy depends on it. Now, this overblown, bloviating language is complete bullshit. The survival of our democracy does not depend on you silencing voices that you disagree with, Senator Murphy. And he's flat out admitting they're not going to stop at one website. Right. They're going to stop at anybody who is even slightly pro-Trump. They're already going after Candace Owens. Mm -hmm. They're already they're going to go after CRTV. They're going to go after Steven Crowder. Even more than they already have, they're going to be much more explicit and egregious about it. They're going to label it hate speech because nobody's going to defend hate speech, right? Right. But nobody has, has actually said specifically what was the hate speech that got Alex Jones banned from 15 companies in roughly 12 hours Correct. Yeah. at one time. Yep. It seems like cartel behavior to me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like, CRTV started to get all these names because a lot of them started realizing, like, you know, we can't survive out on our own on YouTube on these other platforms. Right. They don't want us there, but do everything they can to get us off. So now that they went and got off their own platform, you know, they're trying to find ways so no one can ever find them. So the most hyperventilating uh, senator around all of this is the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee, or, or a member of it, is Mark Warner. Uh, he's a senator from Virginia. Yes, sir. I was thinking, sorry, like, like sorry. because even with, um, okay, Alex Jones is incredibly popular, but like without him having the reach that he has on all the other sites, that's going to start messing with his SEO. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But see, that's here's correct. the thing. What they don't realize is that they've made him the, uh, the everybody's like, I immediately downloaded Alex. I haven't listened to Alex Jones in probably four months, mm -hmm. but you better believe I was refreshing that feed on Monday and I've Just listened like to every minute of the last four days, <laughs> you know, and, and Alex Jones, when he's been deplatformed, mm -hmm. when he's been saying for months, they're going to silence us. The, these globalists have a plan to silence the, the internet and take it over. And then he gets to, he gets deplatformed. Mm -hmm. And then you listen to him and you go, you know, he has, he has a lot more credibility. First thing somebody said to me Monday when I said, did you hear about Alex Jones? I go, yeah, he must really be saying something somebody doesn't want to be heard. Oh, crap. <laughs> this is not, this is a coworker of mine who is not a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. They turned him into a conspiracy theorist. They just made, yeah. Which let me say, I've been hard on conspiracy <laughs> theorists, but l let me defend them for a moment. 
Harry, there is nothing wrong with a theory that there may be a conspiracy of people Mm -hmm. out there who want to do something bad. And as Alex Jones said today, there's nothing wrong with questioning known liars. People like James Clapper are known liars. Right. And so what he says, yes, I, I questioned Sandy Hook, but I'm questioning known liars. And in a free country, I should have the right to question known liars. I should have the right to question events. I should have the right to question my government. And I have to say, I don't disagree with him in what in any way. In the questioning part. Right. When Exactly right. You should have the ability in the United States of America to question everything. Mm-hmm. You should have the ability on this program to ask whatever question about society, government, current events, religion that you want. Because, Harry, frankly, I've asked you some questions about black people that I just don't understand. I've done it on and off the air. Mm-hmm. And you know why? It's because exposure to you mm-hmm. has helped me understand your experience better. And by talking about it, we come to a better understanding of each other and the world, right? Yeah, this flat world. And then this flat earth. Yeah. So Let's question everything. So I don't agree with the conclusions that Alex Jones comes to, mm-hmm. but I do agree that he has the right in America to question whatever he wants to question. Yes. And saying it out loud, saying that he doesn't believe that uh, 9-11 happened the way that it happened, is fine. But you know what I get? I get a book by popular mechanics refuting what he believes Mm -hmm. and then i get to learn both sides and i become a better educated person by him talking about 9-11 conspiracy theories yeah and then popular mechanics refuting his conspiracy theories Mm -hmm. and then it goes back and forth from there that's a healthy society that is a healthy democracy senator murphy a healthy democracy is one where you are free to speak openly without consequences and when you start our when you start arc when you start building architecture to limit those abilities, then you are doing democracy a service. Silencing people is not good for democracy. Right. That's what this is. And they're building a pretense. 